There we go. <laughs> you know, it's funny, when you're shallow water fishing on the Great Lakes, you get light fish and dark fish. And this fish was sitting by two boulders up in there. Oh, man, oh, man, he went under the boat. What I'm doing is casting a little swim bait, a Havoc Beat Shad. And it's just a little finesse soft plastic bait from Berkeley. And I'm covering a lot of shallow, shallow water. So what I'm gonna do is just put the trolling motor, the motor guide on medium high, and just cover some water here to catch some fish. Oh, oh, I got a follower. Oh, he just took it. On this week's episode, Bob fishes Lake Ontario for smallmouth bass in the shallows using swim baits in search of world-class Great Lakes bass action. And later, Bob's at Reed's Birch Island Resort in Manaki, Ontario with some friends from Toro fishing for early season pike on the Winnipeg River. Traditional old-time elegance with the latest amenities and limitless fishing opportunities. Wow. Here we go. That is a fish of a lifetime right there. Wow, we that thing is a monster! They fight hard, don't they? Look at that magnificent fish. Look <laughs> at the size of that fish. There he is again. The color is incredible. Oh, there we go. The Real Fishing Show with Bob Izumi. Big old Great Lakes smallmouth. That is a big rainbow trout, Chris. Nice double header. Whoa! <laughs> nice jump. Yeah. All right. That is a monster <laughs> smallmouth. Man, that is so cool. Another one, there we go. The biggest pike I've ever caught. Hey, that chunk. So that's what we're talking about. Real fishing is sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water, and Tim Hortons. On the Real Fishing Show, we make catching fish like this a possibility. Oh, man. That's a big blackie right there. I just cannot believe the color of some of these, these fish. Of how easy, whoa, easy they stick out in clear water. And it's funny, like in the Great Lakes, you, in a lot of areas, you get two distinct populations of smallmouth. You get shallow fish and deep fish like throughout the summer months, but because it's early season, a lot of the fish are shallow right now. So in this case, you know, you've got, oh, oh yeah. That's a nice one right there. Oh yeah. See, so you've got uh, a lot of shallow fish that are both light and dark. And in this case here, you got a dark one there, boy. Tell you, look how fat that thing is, and that's just a little finesse swim bait there, Havoc Beach Shad, a Berkeley bait, so very cool. Put that one back in the water. See how you can hold them like this, and it just sort of pacifies them, but watch. So you put it in the water, no problem. Very cool. You know, because I'm fishing by myself today, I'm trying to cover as much water as I can. And so I like to fan cast areas and do almost a grid-like deal. So what I'm doing is I'm casting out here, 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 and, and really just trying to work, whoops, there's a fish, trying to work the water column um, accordingly. Oh, that's a good one. Oh yeah, that's a big boy. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's a, a, a monster fish here. That's a that's a trophy right here. <laughs> it's just staying under the boat. Oh here, I got the leader, so I'm using now uh, 10 pound nano felt. Whoa, that's a big one. <sighs> Whoa, I'm on over. Oh yeah, wow, that fish is is a giant one. Okay. Wow, <laughs> the size of that smallmouth right there. All right, wow. Definitely want to get a picture of this guy here. That's a big, 
Great Lakes smallmouth right there. I just can't believe how fat, short, and stocky that fish is. Wow, what a fish. That is, look at that thing. All right. See you later, buddy. <laughs> That's just too cool. Look at that fish. When we return, matching tackle and technique to wow. catch big bass. Stay tuned. Well over five pounds. Let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. Nearly everyone has had this experience. You're after one type of fish when your plans are unexpectedly pushed aside by a totally different encounter. It's just human nature to be disappointed, even though species like carp and catfish are now targeted intentionally. But what about all those other fish out there? Just check out this prehistoric beast, for instance. Bullfins, or dogfish as some prefer to call them, grow to a substantial size. Pound for pound, they consistently outfight any bass, surprising many anglers. Did we mention they're highly aggressive? Witness this hungry monster as he displays little shyness, boldly measuring up some other fisherman's shore launch. Another throwback to the age of dinosaurs are gar pike. If you're looking for something truly different, even weird in fact, this is a fish for you. Unlike other species these days, the population of these fearsome looking specimens is on the increase. Little wonder, they can survive under conditions that would kill anything else. In case you didn't know, gar pike also breathe air. Taken under the right circumstances, anything willing to bite can provide sport. And these days, many of us are looking for something unique and personal. There's an old saying, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Oh, there we go. Whoa. <laughs> One of the things is, is to match your rod and reel to the, uh, the bait you're using. And with a swim bait, a small finesse type swim bait like I'm using, I really do like a bit of a softer action rod. And this is a Fantasista Regista from Abu Garcia. And it's a, a rod designed for the Japanese market, which is it's an incredible action rod for a graphite fishing rod. And the cool thing about it is, it's very lightweight, very sensitive, but also um, it flings out these baits really far. Grab these pliers. Oh, he's got a lot of, a lot of tools around the boat. I got various CUDA tools that I have around the boat just to, just to perform a little surgery when I have to. All righty. I love it. Bronze Beauties. See you, bud. Whoa, baby. Okay. Pretty good little wind coming up. Whoa. And fish like wind. There's, oh, that's a big fish. One thing about it, a lot of times what the wind will do is it'll break up the light penetration on the surface. And in a lot of cases, these bigger fish aren't quite as spooky. And so what happens in a lot of, a lot of situations, these big boys like this giant are just easier to get a cast to. Look at that fish. That is a big one right there. Wow. That one well over five pounds. And that's what fishing swim baits is all about. If you want to catch some trophy smallmouth, make sure you get a selection of uh, swim baits. It's a little Berkeley Havoc Beach Yard on just an eight ounce little mushroom head. It's a very thin wire hook. And the reason I use the short shank hook on this is just to uh, give it more action rather than a long shank hook that would have stuck through the bait further down and uh, proof in the pudding right there. Big old Great Lakes smallmouth on swim baits. Yeah.
All right. Well, you deserve to go back. Look at that thing. Very cool. All righty. Big monster smallmouth fishing the Great Lakes late June. You gotta love it. Bob visits Reed's Birch Island Resort for Pike when we return. <laughs> Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> This tip of the week is sponsored by Coleman, the outdoor company. Yeah, I want to talk about made in the shade. You know, as anglers, we're constantly looking for predator fish that are holding in areas in the shade. We're talking about predators like pike, bass, muskie, even trout species that are looking to ambush their prey by sitting in the shade. And it could be the shade of a boulder, the shade of a dock, a tree, weeds, floating mats, lily pads. The fact is that shade does create cover in itself. And a lot of times, even with this sun beating on me from this angle here, well, you're gonna have a shade line. If there is a weed line along here and the sun is beating this way, well, there'll be a shade line off of that weed line. And once the sun comes around this direction and beats on it, well, those fish might not be on that weed edge, but they may be further back into it because of the sun penetration beating from the other side into the weed. So it's important next time you're on the water, Pay attention to which way the sun is and look for those little dark areas and dark lines. The fish love them. We're talking a perfect spring day here, and I'm with Andrew DeBates from uh, Winnipeg, and uh, Andrew and I met through his father, who is a Toro dealer in Winnipeg, right? Yep. Part of the Mazer Group? Mazer Group, yeah. Yeah, okay, well, we're up here at Reed's Birch Island Resort, Northwestern Ontario, Menaki, and uh, we got a little bit of time before shore lunch to do some swim bait fishing with these uh, Berkeley swim baits. Let's just have some fun, see if we can't catch a, a few pike, okay? What do you think, Andrew? Yeah. Fire out, go for it. Here you're at uh, Reed's Birch Island Resort. The resort has been around since 1915. They built the uh, beautiful boathouse here uh, early in 15, and then the uh, first part of the main lodge was built in uh, the latter part of 15, early 16. There's quite a bit of history here. It was uh, built by Mr. Wilson, who was one of the um, directors of the T. Eaton Company, uh, as his personal retreat, and then it evolved into a, um, an executive retreat for the uh, Eaton uh, company. So it's really steeped in history. Um, it's a very unique, exclusive, intimate island. We have accommodations uh, both in the boathouse and the lodge. There's two sections of the lodge. Uh, the boathouse, we got four rooms we can accommodate up to uh, 10 people. There's six washrooms, uh, a great common area, flat screen TV, uh, Wi Fi. So it's got all the uh, modern conveniences of today with the, uh, the look of the uh, 1950s or the, the early 1900s. Uh, and then the lodge, we have um, six rooms on the back side. We can put two people per room in there. We're just finishing building a new bar and deck. We have uh, not only fishermen, but we can host private functions, weddings, catering, that sort of thing as well. And uh, when we're not booked with fishermen, uh, we do offer gourmet dinners for the uh, local uh, community as well as the cottagers here out on the lake. Oh, there you go. Oh, nice. <sighs> Did you see that one hit? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he's all wrapped up. There you go. <laughs> well, that didn't take long. It was about five casts. Oh, he's all wrapped up here. There we go. That's Ooh. not bad. Is he lassoed? Oh there yeah. There we go. He, he hit it well too. Very cool. Okay. Now, funny because yesterday I was out with my brother Wayne and. We nice had some very made. big fish follow, and uh, they would eat that as bait. <laughs> oh, the net, the net's bending. <laughs> oh, oh. And that's why we like Ontario Sunset Country right there. It's very important to keep an eye on your bait as it's coming to the boat, because these things are notorious for following. Yeah. 
And you don't want to pull your lure out if there's one behind it, keep it in the water. I love early season pike fishing. One of the things we like to do is look for some of those shallow feeder bays, and we'll run as many of those bays as we can in a day, trying to figure out where those pike are. Now, one of the ways to approach those shallow bays is to work some of those lead-in shorelines in the flats and points, anything that leads into the bay. We'll start on the outside and work our way back and fish it right into the back of the bay. And a lot of times you'll find the fish either at the start the middle or the back of the bay. And keep in mind, water temperatures, everything. I remember on many trips going into some of these bays, there's no fish in them early morning when it's still cold out. Then once the sun pops out and warms the water up, the pike flood in from the deeper areas into these back bays. So they're really great places to find early season pike. And one of my favorite ways of fishing for them is to use swim baits. And here's a couple of, uh, power bait rib shads and uh, I've got them rigged two different ways. Now I've got it rigged here, the one in my left hand with a gulp jig head, great way to cover water for some of these shallow early season pike. Now if there's a lot of weeds around, you can go with a weedless version and this is a uh, swim bait weighted belly hook here. It's one of the Fusion 19 Berkeley hooks and uh, that's a good way of fishing around weeds, but if the fish are striking short, I've also added a treble hook on there as a little stinger hook. So both of these methods of rigging work great for fishing swim baits in some of those shallow pike areas. When we return, more pike fishing and fun at Reed's Birch Island Resort. Stay tuned. Here at Birch Island Resort, we are located on the Winnipeg River system. With that being, we have numerous lakes to fish out of, and that brings a huge variety of species to catch. Our foreign May species consist of northern pike, walleye, smallmouth bass, and world-class musky fishing. Oh, oh, big follow, big, huge. If you look at my bait, look behind it. Look. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's a musky. Oh, it's a big musky. Oh, I got one too. Oh man. That was big. That was huge. I got something here too. Oh, yellow pike. That was a big fish. Maybe the musky will take him. Yeah. <laughs> that was huge. Wasn't it? That, that was, was like <laughs> that was like about a 40, 45 inch fish. That's as just big as I followed my uh, rib shot that, up. That's as big as I've ever seen. Oh man, that was big. Well. Maybe that muskie will come up and eat it. I think it was a big muskie. It looked like it, you know? It, uh, it was just massive. I, I, I could see the shadow way out. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, look, look, I, I said. There we are. <laughs> there we go. I cannot believe I'm gonna get you another little grass pig. Uh, that was amazing. Well, you know, the good thing about it is we both saw it. So there was no denying. That was big. <laughs> Wasn't it? That yeah, was crazy. Mm. Wow. Because pike season just opened, a lot of the pike would have been up here spawning in the back of this cove you can see all the reeds and stuff that are just uh, old from last year but I don't know the sun may bring a few up on the shallow flat here but for the most part those big ones we and we've seen a couple good ones uh, in this last uh, probably half hour of fishing or so have been just on the lead-in points you know those little sort of subtle rock points that are right outside of these bays Andrew and it's uh, pretty key that you know you find a contact spot for those big fish yeah because they're the king of the castles. They can sit anywhere they want. This is a little gulp jig head here. And it's a little small grass pig junior. Just a finessey little bait. This time of year, the pike don't want a really big bait. So I'm using like a five inch rib shad. All right. Oh, look at the pike down there. There's oh, yeah, one. Look at that. See him? Is it ever clear here? Yeah, let's see if he hits this. 
Here we go. Let's see. He didn't. Oh yeah, look. Oh, we this, got it. That's a different one. Yeah, it is. It was a different one for sure. Oh, so they've moved shallow, I think. I think they've moved shallow. And that's one thing, it's important to have a good pair of polarized glasses. And we're both wearing Costa Del, Del Mar uh, sunglasses. It's amazing eh, how we can see those fishes Unreal, now. Oh yeah. Very important to always watch for fish during this time of year, during the spring of the year. And even though the water up here at Manaki has got some color to it, you can really see, uh, see down. I can see the bottom. Yeah. You see one? Well, what kicked up right there? Oh, there goes one. See him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Got one? Yeah. <laughs> Lots of fun, eh? Yeah. I downsized the swim bait. <laughs> this time of year, I think the fish want a smaller bait, and you're going to just get a lot of, a lot of hits on it. There. Ooh. Oh, oh, watch yourself. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he lassoed me. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, what can I say? The last three days have been a lot of fun. Fishing, some good laughs, phenomenal eating. And we've had the island all to ourselves up here at Reed's Birch Island Resort. So it's just been a memorable trip. Come on up and visit the Reeds up here on this wonderful island that they have. We'll see you next week right here for some more real fishing. <laughs> this is a big fish. That is a fish of a lifetime. <laughs> well, that is just amazing. Look at that thing. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> that was too cool. Oh, man, what a fish. Look at that.